Are you able, asked Jesus, are you able to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Are you able, he asks. So what's so important about this baptism thing? What is at stake in a few drops of water? Why all this fuss over Elliot and Tyler, Alexia and Stella on the day of their baptism? I have an answer, and it's in the form of a story. The year is 1921, George Washington Carver. He's been summoned to Washington, D.C. to to, uh, uh, appear before the House Ways and Means Committee to testify, to explain his work on the peanut, on its medicinal and its commercial properties and possibilities. George Washington Carver, scientist, botanist, educator, inventor, and, and something else, baptized Christian. Now, due to segregation, it was highly unusual for an African-American to appear before Congress as an expert witness, let alone to do so representing European and American agriculture. And some Southern congressmen shocked and outraged at Carver's presence make his stay in D.C. as humiliating and as painful as they possibly can. And they're good at this. They knew how. And as the only African-American called to testify, Carver is placed last, dead last, on a long list of of expert witnesses. In fact, not only is he placed last, he waits three days for his turn to testify. And throughout those days, he feels the hostility of those around him. The contempt of some members of Congress is palpable. He feels by turns uneasy, terrified, and he knows he is unwelcome. Finally, after three long, anxious days, he is the very, very last person left, the only person still waiting to speak, and his name is called. He rises, and he begins his long, lonely walk up the aisle towards the front of the hall. And as he walks down the aisle, he is met with derisive and bigoted comments whispered at him, hissed at him, and hate-filled stares. One of the committee members yells out a crude and cutting remark. Carver winces inwardly, but he continues down the aisle. Another committee member leans back in his chair, places his feet up on the table in front of him, places his hat over his eyes as if to go to sleep. And when the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee requires him, instructs him to take off his hat, that member responds with a loud and ugly racial slur. At this point, Carver is ready to turn around and go home. He is afraid of the powerful men in the room. He is made uneasy by their hostility and their hate. And all of his instincts urge him to turn and flee. He doesn't. Instead, as he's walking, he reminds himself of his baptism and of whose he is. Whatever they say of me, he says to himself. Whatever they think of me, he thinks to himself. I know who I am. And I know whose I am. I am a child of God. So what is it about baptism, this, these few bits of water? This. Baptism is an identity to give one Courage. Carver finally reaches the podium. He is told that he has 20 minutes to speak. He opens his display case and he launches into his talk. Well, so engaging is his presentation that those 20 minutes just fly by. 
The chairman rises and asks for an extension of time. No one objects. Carver is granted that day four, count them, four additional extensions of time. In the end, he speaks for several hours to a rapt audience. And at the conclusion of his presentation, the members of the House Ways and Means Committee stand and hear this to a man. They give George Washington Carver, scientist, inventor, professor, formerly enslaved, a long round of applause. By our baptisms, we know who we are and whose we are. We know to whom we belong. It is an identity to give one courage. A few moments ago, we baptized into the Christian life four children. Elliot, Tyler, Stella, and Alexia. We baptize these children to help prepare them for a perilous world. To prepare them in the face of meanness and cruelty. To prepare them in the face of life. It's inevitable disappointments and unfairness. It's times of misery and despair. And I know Donnie and Holly and Laura and Tony, I know these parents that the last thing they want to hear about, think about on this shining day is that sort of thing. But they know as much as you know, as much as we all know, that as hard as they try, and God knows these parents will try as hard as they can, they will not, they cannot protect these beautiful children from life, from its hardships and vicissitudes, from suffering, or even from death. You cannot protect them, but you can prepare them. And today is a part of that preparation, clothing these children in Christ, wrapping them in the mantle of eternity, welcoming them into this family of faith. And if we do it right, godparents and parents and friends and family and church, if we do it right, Elliot and Tyler, Alexia and Stella will live lives of courage and kindness, of grace and grit, because they will always know who they are and whose they are, children of God beloved and precious. They will not be immune to bigotry or stupidity, but if we do it right, their families and their friends and this church, if we fulfill the vows we made today, these children will have everything they need and then some to live with courage. So what is it about baptism and a few drops of water? Why all the fuss? Only this. It is an identity to give one courage. Amen.